If we take photographs for our own enjoyment without making a profession of it, then we're amateur photographers. The widespread use of cameras and their ease of use have helped to sharpen our eye for good photos. Photography is now a part of our everyday life and affects all social classes, whether the motivation is to record an event or to create art. We come back from vacation with films full of dreams. And the surprising thing is, among the mass of anonymous photographers, there are some very talented people. The word amateur comes from love. Festivals and exhibitions help us to understand photography better. Amateurs can meet professionals and share their passion, regardless of whether they take photos by accident or by vocation, whether they're interested in the taking of the pictures or the result. Everyone presses the button not knowing whether they're blindly following a trend or whether they're striving to create an artistic image. This looks, looks as if it's staged, but it's not at all. I saw them there in the street, and that's it, really. When you go to shows, you should try to find out why one picture jumps out at you more than the others, and attempt to come up with something in the same vein. There's a lot of um, competition out there. There's a lot of people trying to be photographers. And I think um, you shouldn't worry about that. You should just take your own world and work on it and, and take it from there and, and keep um, enjoying it. You know? But I would just not get so intimidated or worried about um, you know, what the right film, the right camera. Is it a Nikon? Is it a Canon? It's not about that. It's what's coming from inside that matters. So I would just say if you feel it you should try it and don't worry about if you fail at first or, or you can't quite find your way you will right from the start of photography there were keen amateurs who made use of the daguerreotype they no doubt were drawn to the technique because this albeit fragile result allowed them to keep an immediate trace of people and things without having to spend a fortune on painters who couldn't in any case stop time The amateur photographer's favorite subject for experimentation is his or her own family. What a mine of consenting models, a source of available relatives. The very history of a family is conveyed through images of the high points, which reinforce a sense of belonging. Photography is probably the best way of protecting our loved ones from death and disappearance. Different people have different capacities for storing memories, but no one can record everything. However, a photo is inescapable. It's there, it's proof, it's the image of your roots which lets you delve into your memories. Many people like to look at family photos of people they've never known because this constitutes something of a family memory. 
It lets them make contact with where they come from. A photo will recall the event, but it will also induce the accompanying emotional responses. There are weddings, baptisms, a child's first steps, his first smile, but all that's part of the collective conscious. A family photo is the photo that everyone takes, but that you never look at. But if you observe family albums, if you analyze them carefully, it's incredible the amount of information they contain. And that's how they become an extraordinary means of information, which is a great historic value. Amateurs can use photography to catalyze the memory, to search for the unusual, for beauty, as an artistic process, and above all, as a social process. They make a place their own and can affirm, I was there. Often the trip is a whistle-stop tour and no one can take it all in. When they get back, they can study the places they visited at their leisure. The very nature of a photo is that it lets you record a moment in a very brief fragment of time that flashes by. And for many people, coming back to this moment, a certain kind of light, a flash in time, is like getting close to your soul, something which makes you feel you're alive. Amateur photography is particularly rampant in foreign countries when people discover different cultures and turn into instant roving reporters. Doctor by trade, photographer by passion, it's not always easy to reconcile one's life and one's dreams. It's not easy for me to show people my photos because I don't think they're extraordinary. I have to ask other people for their opinion before I dare to show them. I do a lot of portraits and illustrated reports for which I photograph people, and it's the contact with people that I like. I have it in my job, and it's the same in photography. Henri Cartier-Bresson, Capa, Duano are all masters, but I think that nowadays I get the biggest thrill from looking at Salgado's photos. I'd be prepared to do just photography. If it were possible for me to have a job in photography, I think I would stop medicine. Yes, I'm pretty sure I would. As you're about to see, amateurs are often very good, excellent even. In fact, they can be inspired with genius at times. The international photo magazine competition proves it. Over the years, it has become the most popular event with photo fans all over the world. We're sent almost 40,000 photos a year. It's so easy now, you just press a button, it's sharp and so on, all you need is a good idea. We're the only magazine that takes contributions from anyone. We have no restrictions. Often competitions say, photograph flowers, send pictures of animals. We say, send whatever you like. There are prizes to be won, of course, but what people really want is to appear in the magazine. 
The editorial team select the photos more for their originality than any formal aesthetic criteria. Competitors often follow the trends that are popular with such and such a magazine. If the main theme has been nudes, most amateurs send in photos of nudes. We can tell if our readers are copying the magazine. There are always copyists who try to imitate Newton or Avedon, whatever. What we're interested in is encouraging amateur photography to evolve. In fact, if you look at our early issues from nearly 16 years ago, you can see that the standard wasn't as high as it is now. Thanks to Photo Magazine, amateur photography really has moved forward. When the issue appears, we get calls from all over the world, from people who want to buy the rights to the photos. A lot of advertising agencies are surprised by the quality of the photos and sometimes want to use them for their advertising campaigns. There was one very striking example where Life magazine contacted us to do a double-page spread. An amateur photographer can find himself in the right place at the right time. Amateur photographers sometimes happen to be the biggest press photographers for a day by witnessing some important event, often a tragic one. The people who are here are here because, if they have a camera, they're already amateur photographers. When you have a camera, it's because you want to take photos, especially if you witness some big accident or an earthquake, a bomb attack, or a killing, and you have some idea about photography, you get your camera out and you start shooting some photos. For years now, a lot has been said about amateur photographers who know that if they do something good, it can be sold. The press agencies have no qualms about using amateur photos. Hot news stories are more important than the quality of the photos. Cameras have improved so much, they're nothing like they used to be. Amateur photos are like those of the professionals. When there's an accident, a killing, or a bomb attack, we always ask if anyone has taken any pictures. Usually, one or two people have done so. Despite the omnipresence of professional photographers all over the world, there's always some unexpected event that only an amateur photographer in the right place at the right time can photograph, and his or her photos will be the ones that get published. DJ De La Maggiora was a job seeker. He was on a work experience program learning about photography. He was given a camera and told to take pictures on the theme, Marseille, the town of soccer. He spent three months looking for powerful photos, but to no avail. Then he remembered his childhood in the projects in the northern suburbs of Marseille and went off to photograph the street soccer matches. Liberation, the French national daily newspaper, even published his photos. This amateur who took his pictures with a disposable camera hasn't found a job yet, but he's set on becoming a press photographer. When Yvette Troipoux began to take photos, she was an enthusiastic amateur, a keen dabbler. Duano said of her, when she takes her Leica, that has seen so much, out of her bag, it's the sign that the fun's about to start and faces begin to relax. 
All this kindness that emanates from her ensures that she will harvest a good crop of pleasant photos. This true lover of photography started to take photographs of the photographic world. She snapped the top photographers who became her friends over the course of time. She went to all the photo previews to capture on film all those who were usually behind the camera. Jacques-Henri Lartigue was given his first camera at the age of eight. From then on, he photographed all the marvelous details of everyday life, and his photos retain all the freshness of childhood. I invented my eye trap for playing and also for everything else. In other words, for nature that I loved so much, for the smell of the air, for all these things that mean so much to me. I would blink three times, turn around once, and I thought I could catch everything around me. Until I wanted to see what I'd caught, and there was nothing there. Paris, March 1910. The air is drunk with warm fragrances, and my big old camera feels heavier than usual on my arm. I try not to get my feet caught in it. I'm tired but dizzy with pleasure at the idea of adding two or three new photographs to my collection. Pedestrians, horsemen, and fine carriages go down the avenue. This is where I sit on an iron stool and watch and wait. I set up my camera, adjust the focus to four or five meters. I've become quite good at estimating the distance. The hard thing is to photograph her at the right time with her foot out. And this woman I'm waiting for, who's all dolled up, looking very fashionable, very eccentric, very ridiculous, and very pretty. She stands out from afar among the people out walking. She comes nearer, I feel shy, I'm shaking a little. 20 meters, 10, 8, 6. The shutter of my heavy camera makes so much noise that the lady jumps almost as much as I do. This is my first really famous photo. Someone told my father that Gabriel Voisin was going to do some glider tests. He took off with the wind and flew for about 20 meters, which seemed extraordinary then. And I used to dream at night that I would take off. Those were the days before aviation, when everyone dreamed of flying. Dear Lartigue, movement, speed, racing cars are all concerned with the beauty of the moment. Carefree games, life has utter joy. I used to sketch all the photos I took when I came home before I developed them, and I knew so exactly what I'd photographed that you can recognize them. You could tell which came out right and which hadn't. Lartigue put his texts and drawings in albums all through his life. His photos are a chronicle of the well-off, artistic social classes, his own background. I've always had modest ambitions, to be free, to be in the countryside, to be by the seaside, to be stark naked in the sun, to be in love, to be content, to be happy, to know intelligent people, to read fine books. 
You see, I'm enthusiastic about a thousand things. Ever since I was a boy, photography has been my eye trap that lets the truth through. If I wanted to use artifice, I'd do painting. I wouldn't take photos. In fact, that's what I do. I do paintings. You never have enough talent, and you always want to do better, and you never manage all that you want to achieve. To be free and happy and content, I've always refused to have an art dealer. I prefer to do without one. There's Suze Rendal. You've already written that one down. And she's called Vicky Odge. But I've got a whole page of Vicky Odge. I don't agree. I think you should write it down so we know who it is. Vicky Odge. Okay, for once, I'll do it. René inspired him. Bibi married him. Anne Florette, his dear wife, who shared a long, carefree life with him. I'd shown my photos to a lot of photographers in France who glanced at them without really looking at them. Until one day when I was in New York, some people got all enthusiastic about them. From 1902 to 1962, no one had been interested in my photos. Photos are one of the three things that I love. Photos are one of my three favorite ways of trying to capture the wonders of life. And these three are writing, painting, and photography. There are lots of times in my life when I can't remember whether I kept a diary or took photos or painted, but I was having fun playing sports and all that. It depends on what period of my life I was in. I regret all the things I didn't do, for example, being world boxing champion, being Einstein, being a great saint, going to the moon. Oh, the list is endless. There's just not enough time. Many painters have done photography. Degas was an enthusiastic photographer. He used the photos as a model in his search for the right movement, attitude, the fleeting gesture. Having photographed his children and done a picture book of his family, Emile Zola photographed Paris during the World Fair. Cendrillon Béranger is a young art student. She uses photography in her search for an identity. Her favorite studio is the photo booth in the subway. She uses various objects to animate her body in this limited space. The idea of photographing myself in a photo booth came about quite simply, when I needed a passport photo. In these new booths, you can see yourself like in a mirror. And I saw that I could control my own image. And that idea appealed to me. So I went along with the backdrop to see what that would look like, to check out the lighting, and see what I could do with this machine and how far I could take it. Cendrillon is both the model and the photographer since she chooses her own frame, colors, and lighting. I'm not sure what my position vis-à-vis -vis photography actually is. Photography is there to record the event that occurs in the booth. To me, in some ways, 
The event is more important than the result. When I tell you I went into a photo booth, you don't actually know whether I did or not. You can see the photo, but I could be lying. I could say I did this, but I actually did it on a computer. But once I've told you I went into a photo booth, your imagination kicks in, and you create a film of it in your mind, of me going to the photo booth. And every photo booth picture is an image from the same film. That's what I like about it. People often say I'm narcissistic. Maybe I am. So what? <laughs> it's important to um, not be intimidated. Try to find something that you feel something about in terms of a subject. And then eventually, hopefully, you'll develop your own style, something that makes sense to you. The word amateur comes from love, the purest love which asks for nothing in return. The amateur does not seek money or celebrity. If he tries to imitate the masters, if he takes care of his technique, it's because he's asking photography to convey life, his life, and that of his kith and kin. The amateur can be ridiculous, but he can also, by accident or by a sudden revelation of talent, achieve excellence.